Hi guys, it's Katie. Today I'm going to do a little food prep. I'm going to start with some kale. I'm just going to clean it up so that when it's time to cook it, I can just throw it in the pot. So I'll take the stems off and I'll tear it up into small pieces and make sure it's washed. Um, this is like a short week meal prep, food prep, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, got, I got called out of town unexpectedly last week and this week my husband's off work so I've been a little bit off schedule. But I want to make sure the next several days are smooth sailing just so that we can go. We went out today and um, I want to be able to come home and make dinner quickly so that we can go do fun things while my husband has a few days off of work. So um, I'm going to have kale as a side dish with some pulled pork. I showed how to make the, it's just smoked pork, but in one of my freezer meals. It's the last of all the freezer meals from when I got ready for my baby to be born. Um, I think we had eight or ten packs of that, so it's still some of it in the freezer, which is nice because it makes a really quick meal. Um, I just warm it up. Sometimes I add barbecue sauce, but a lot of times we just like it. It's smoked, so it has a lot of flavor. And then I just do a couple side dishes. Usually I like to have greens. Sometimes I have corn or cornbread. Um, but really you could just have like salad and a frozen vegetable. And the meat's fully cooked, so there's not any prep for that. So I'll get this ready. And then when it's time to cook the greens, I just uh, put them in a skillet with some, usually like bacon fat or something like that. Some... Um, onion powder, garlic powder, and just saute them till they're tender. I also have some squash here. We're going to just bake these with some uh, meatloaf. I think that will be what we have tomorrow. So I'll get these prepped. I'm also going to go ahead and make up the meatloaf so that tomorrow I can just throw everything in the oven. I'm going to save the seeds. I'm not going to roast them right now. I'll just roast them tomorrow when I have the oven on anyway when I'm making the uh, meatloaf and baking these squash. So but now I'll just scoop out the inside. And these little acorn squash seeds, I like them better than pumpkin seeds. They're smaller so they have a thinner sort of shell on them. So I like them better. But pretty much any squash like this, I will roast the seeds. So things like spaghetti squash or acorn squash or butternut squash. I'm just removing some of that stringy stuff. I'm just going to put a little olive oil in here. So a glug. And salt and pepper. And I'll just spread these out on a sheet pan and roast them at like 400 or 425, 15 to 20 minutes. For now, these will go in the refrigerator. Okay, I'm also going to put these in the refrigerator. Just kind of put them back together so the cut sides are together so it doesn't dry out. I don't think it will be that long, so... If I was going to do these later, I would pack them up a little tighter. Okay, I'll go ahead and put this in the refrigerator. I might cover it with a towel. Right. Just cover it like that so it doesn't dry out too fast. Go ahead and pack this up. And I'm not going to spin it dry because a little bit of water will help it cook. So this is ready for the fridge. Right. 
while I have the cutting board out, I'm going to cut up pizza toppings. We'll have pizza. we got some red bell pepper. Some mushrooms. Onion. Black olives. And green pepper. The last pizza topping is pepperoni. I got this gigantic three pound bag. It's such a better deal. If you buy pepperoni a lot, you should look out for this. It's Hormel brand. But I think the smaller packages, the per unit weight was like $9 a pound, and this was less than $5 a pound. Um, I think it was like $4.75 a pound or something like that. So it works out to be a much better value. So three pounds, I'm gonna portion these into half pound packages and food save for them and keep them in the freezer. So I'll put five in the freezer and one I'll just leave in the refrigerator for this week. There's all my pepperoni for the freezer. This is the one for the fridge. Those put away. All right, the last thing I need to make for the pizza night is the pizza dough. And I'll just have it ready in the refrigerator. And I'll link the recipe down below that I use. It's all for all recipes. It's a whole wheat recipe, but I a lot of times just do all purpose flour and it turns out just as good. So we'll just do that. It's a yeast recipe instead of a sourdough recipe. I just want to get it done. When I make up dough that's going to go straight in the refrigerator, I don't worry about using hot water or warm water. And I don't ever proof my yeast. You can proof your yeast with warm water if you're not sure how old it is, but I'm confident in my yeast. So I don't ever proof it, and I just use you know, room temperature or cool water since it's going to go straight in the refrigerator anyway. Pretty much any bread is going to taste better if you put it in the refrigerator overnight. So mix it up like you normally would, pack it up, put it straight in the refrigerator. The next day, take it out and then continue on as if nothing had ever happened. And just that extra time in the refrigerator will um, just give it a more complex flavor. Alright, so I got my pizza dough here. 
and I'm just going to put it straight in this container. You want to get a container that has enough room so that it can expand. Now this will go in the fridge just like this. Alright, last thing I'm going to do today is mix up my meatloaf. And I don't really have a recipe, I just throw a bunch of stuff in. Start with beef. Salt. Pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, parsley, thyme, some ground oatmeal or breadcrumbs, a couple eggs, splash of water. A little bit of extra water in case I need it. And I have my pan here, just a loaf pan. Have that ready so I don't have to rummage around my <laughs> cabinets with yucky hands. And then just mix. Alright, once it comes together, I just kind of Put it in my pan like this. Press it down. I usually run my fingers like this and make sort of a channel. Make the top of the meatloaf a little domed. That way the fat will kind of go down and when you lift it up you don't have a big puddle on the surface. Just gives it a nice shape when it comes out of the pan too. So I'll just cover this with some really sad aluminum foil and put it in the fridge and then I can just pop it in the oven. Alright that's it for this time. Hope you enjoyed. Give my video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time.